Hi everyone, it's Matt Watson here from CarWow. No, honestly, it is looking, it's me, it's me. <laughs> and this is the new McLaren 765LT. It's a more hardcore, focused, track ready version of the already pretty blooming bonkers 720S. And in this video, I'm going to talk you through the upgrades over that car. Then I'm going to take it for a spin around Silverstone GP circuit. Whoa, whoa. To see what it amounts to in reality. Now, before we get into all of that, please make sure you subscribe to this channel and hit the bell icon to turn your notifications on. That way, you will not miss a single upload. Buying a new car? Head to CarWow to get offers from the UK's top dealers. CarWow.co.uk, the car buying comparison site. There are six major elements which make up a McLaren long tail car. I'm going to talk you through all of them. The first one is aerodynamics. So the name long tail means the car is longer than before. And part of that is at the front. So it's actually 48 millimeters longer here at the front because this nose is more pointy. You've got this extended front splitter here. In fact, the whole front of the car has been redesigned for improved aero. Even the eye sockets are a little bit more closed, like it's scowling, but that improves the aero as well. One of the most noticeable changes on the 765 are those vents on the wheel arches. When the wheels are spinning in, they create quite a lot of turbulent air and it gets trapped in the wheel well and creates a lift. So those vents lets that turbulent air out, which is good. Also, you get some new door blades here. These help smooth the air down the side of the car to reduce drag. And then you have these side skirts as well, which then feed air into this new scoop to help cool the engine. Here at the back, you've got a new rear bumper, a new extended rear diffuser, which helps reduce turbulence and improve aerodynamics. And the back end of this car actually sticks out nine millimeters more than that of the 720S, so it's increased slightly. Though it is funny that they call it a long tail. Yeah, it's actually the front which has been extended further, but hey. Anyway, there's a tail, haha, to tell about these bits here that have been added on. Now, what they do is square off the back end of the car. Apparently, the car's aero will be better if the back end was completely square, but the engineers say that, well, they'd like to do that, it wouldn't look so aesthetically pleasing. And this is a real nice rear end, isn't it? Especially with this extra mesh they fitted to the car here, which all helps improve cooling and airflow. And then there's the wing. It's 20% larger than on the 720S. In fact, it's so large, they've had to put a little cutout in it there so that when it's sticking up, you can still see out of your rear view mirror. See, you've just overtaken. Also, this wing sticks up even further when you're in normal racing mode. And combined with all the other aero stuff, it helps provide 200 kilos of downforce at 150 miles an hour, which is 25% more downforce than you get on the 720S. The second key feature of a McLaren long tail car is reduced weight. So the 765LT gets carbon fiber racing seats and they're the ones that you get in the center that they do have a unique pattern for this car and they save 18 kilos. The ultra lightweight forged alloy wheels with titanium bolts save 22 kilos overall. The glass for the windscreen and the side windows is slightly thinner and at the back here, that's polycarbonate. Yeah, it sounds cheap, but it's actually expensive and it saves in total that six kilos. A further 2.5 kilos has been saved by building the central tunnel and the door cards out of carbon fiber and getting rid of the normal door pockets and replacing them with this elasticated pouch. There's a full titanium exhaust system which saves 3.8 kilos. Now McLaren could actually have just made it as a single piece exhaust but they've given it four individual exhaust pipes because apparently that improves the sound but I'll be the judge of that in a bit. Anyway moving on. Wait a minute, there's no floor carpets in here. What kind of poverty spec is this? Oh, I know, it saves 2.4 kilos. All the new body panels, whether they look carbon fiber or not, are indeed carbon fiber. And that combined with the special meshing at the back of the car helps save 14.3 kilograms. McLaren has used little helper springs in the suspension, which help reduce the weight by a further 1.5 kilos. The car also gets a lightweight lithium ion battery, which saves a further three kilos. I don't know what it is with front boots, but I just can't resist getting into them. Deletion of the audio system saves 1.5 kilos. And if you remove the air conditioning, that saves 10 kilos. Though if you're a wuss, you can actually have them put back in. Sadly, some weight has been added back to the car with upgraded brakes and a high pressure fuel pump. They add five kilograms in total, but still overall, the total saving is 80 kilos over a standard 720S, which is actually more weight than me. So it's a big deal. 
The third feature of a McLaren Longtail is power. So this has a four litre twin turbo V8 that's been tuned to 765 horsepower and 800 newton meters of torque. So more powerful and has more torque than the normal 720. It's got forged pistons, loads of stuff done to it, but you don't wanna know about that. Let's just see how well it launches. We're in launch mode, four throttle, boost building, boost is ready, release brake. Off we go. Oh, some more traction. Oh, mate, I'm there in second and third. This thing is just flying. My God. Oh. Wow. Well, that was certainly very, very quick. Traction was a bit of an issue. The surface is a little bit damp, but once this thing hooked up, you could just see the numbers on the speedo just taking off. Another thing to point out is that it actually has a shorter final drive than the normal 720, which helps with the acceleration. And it's got a closer ratio gearbox as well. I really wanna see how quick this is in a drag race. Could this be the first sub 10 second car on CarWow? Make sure you're subscribed and hit the bell icon because that video will be coming soon. Now we come to the fourth key feature of a McLaren long tail car, and that is exclusivity and i can keep this pretty short and sweet you see with a starting price of 280,000 pounds it's already going to be pretty exclusive but the fact is mclaren will only make 765 of them so one for every horsepower the engine produces if you want to make your 765 lt even more exclusive you can take it to the guys at mclaren special operations and go for this full exposed carbon look at this it's absolutely gorgeous now the car's body panels are carbon anyway, so why are you paying extra to just have it exposed? And quite a lot extra. So for this, you're gonna have to spend an extra 100,000 pounds over the normal 280 grand of the car's starting price. The reason why you're paying that is because when the car's painted, you can't see the weave and they can just put any old weave of carbon on there. It's still just as strong, it just doesn't look as good. But when you're looking at it, they have to line up the weave to make it look as good as possible, and they've done that. And it's absolutely exquisite. Oh, I'd like that very much. If you're wondering why I'm wearing a mask, it's so that I don't infect this car, because it's just so special. The fifth key feature of a McLaren Longtail is track focus dynamics. Let's start off with the brakes. So you get the monoblock six piston calipers from the center and they have a special little vent on them which sends air across the front and round the back to cool the pads. Obviously you get carbon ceramic discs as standard, but if you pay extra you can get the discs off the center. So they take six months to make. Four months of that, they are in an oven at a thousand degrees to help them cure. As a result, they can resist fade by up to four times as much as normal carbon ceramic disc brakes. The steering system has a quicker ratio with a stiffer torsion bar for improved responsiveness. The car suspension system has been reworked. So the active dampers and active anti-roll system has been recalibrated. You've got stiffer springs all round. At the front, it rides five millimeters low to the ground. The track is also wider by six millimeters here at the front. And all that helps improve the grip, as does the fact you now get Pirelli Trofeo R tires as standard. Last, but by no means least, is the fact that this larger rear wing gives it even more of an air brake effect. But what do all these upgrades actually translate to out on the track? Well, that brings me on to the final feature of a McLaren Longtail. Finally then, we come to driver engagement. And I'm at Silverstone Circuit here in Great Britain, and I'll be driving part of the Grand Prix track. Let's see how much fun this car is. Out on track. One thing I like about McLarens is the steering feel. Part of that is helped by the thin wheel. BMWs, for instance, have overly fat wheels, so you don't get such a sensation through your hands. <laughs> this thing shifts like crazy, <laughs> but it doesn't just shift well. These brakes are immense. Tightens the car beautifully. You really do feel exactly what's going on through your bottom. And you can adjust it if you get it wrong. It's very adjustable, this. Gotta stay brave here. Yes. The punch from the engine really does stand out. And you always just seem to be on boost. That must be something to do with the fact that you're, whoa! Nice slide there. 
you've got a lower final drive, gearing's shorter, and the ratios are closer than in the normal 720S. So you really do notice that. It means that when you're going through corners, you're actually in a higher gear than you'd otherwise normally be in. Oh, the traction out of the turns is so good. I've got to be honest with you though, this car is potentially a little bit too quick for me right now. It's something that if you're lucky enough to be able to buy one, you are going to want to get some time on track with an instructor to really get the most out of it. Oh. <laughs> I'll tell you one thing I like about McLarens is they always judge their traction control just so blooming well. So it gives you a little bit of play, a little bit of slip, but it's there to help you out. Oh, there's gear shifts, they're just like instant, instant, instant. If you buy one of these, please take it on track. Don't just have it as a collector's piece. You'll be missing out. A bit of a tank slapper. <laughs> now, of course, if you do, make sure you've got it short <laughs> just in case you make an error like that. All the features of a McLaren long tail. This has got them in spades. Especially the driver engagement. I can certainly vouch for that. I've just been having an absolute blast in this car, but in the interests of balanced motoring journalism, I should point out that McLaren doesn't have the best reliability record. And that brings me on to five annoying things about the McLaren 765LT. The way these seats protrude here, it's easy to just bang your elbow on it. I just did it and caught my funny bone so, so badly. I've got electric hand now, and I can't even feel my little finger. This is McLaren's older infotainment system. You get a new one in things like the GT. Quite frankly, it's a bit crap. Look at this rear view mirror. It's just so horrible and cheap, like something out of a Dacia, not a McLaren supercar. I mean, come on guys, spend some money on the mirror. There's no glove box. Surely there's space for one there. I know it's a super sports car, but still, what about your racing gloves? While the reversing camera is okay, and you do get these lines here for guiding you into a space, they don't turn when you turn the steering wheel like they do on many other cars to really help guide you in. And you can kind of do with that on something this wide and with such poor rear visibility. So then what's my final verdict on the new McLaren 765LT? Should you avoid it? Should you consider it? Should you shortlist it? Or should you just go right ahead and buy it? Well, if you want to go right ahead and buy it, you need to be quick because there's only 765 of them and they're selling out very, very quickly. And not surprising because it's an absolutely amazing and exhilarating car. I'm sure it'd be collectible, but if you do buy one, don't just stick it into storage, drive it, because you will love it. I love it. I hope you all enjoyed the video. If you did, please give it a like. Also, let me know in the comments below which you'd rather have, this McLaren 765LT or the Mercedes-AMG GT Black Series. Now, if you want to watch some more videos, then click over there. It might be over there, or it's over there. Anyway, click on the video windows. And if you'd like to subscribe to the CarWow newsletter, where we'll keep you up to date with all the latest new car news and reviews in between the uploads of these videos, just click on the box there. I think I've got it right. It's there, yeah. Thanks for watching.